the final chapter of the Dharma Pada, the Brahmana. Stop the stream valiantly. Drive away the desires, O Brahmana. When you have understood the destruction of all that was made, you will understand that which was not made. If the Brahmanana has reached the other shore in both laws, in restraint and contemplation, all bonds vanish from him who has attained knowledge. He for whom there is neither the hither nor the further shore, nor both, him fearless and unshackled, I call Brahmana. He who is thoughtful, blameless and settled, dutiful, without passion, and who has attained the highest end, I call him a Brahmana. The sun is bright by day, the moon shines by night. The warrior is bright in his armor. The Brahmana is bright in his meditation. The Buddha is awakened and bright in splendor day and night. Because a man is rid of evil, therefore he is called Brahmana. Because he walks quietly, therefore he is called a Samana. Because he has set away his own impurities, therefore he is called a Pagatita, a pilgrim. No one should attack a Brahmana, but no Brahmana, if attacked, should let himself fly at his aggressor. Woe to him who strikes a Brahmana. More woe to him who flies at his aggressor. It advantages a Brahmana, not a little if he holds his mind back from the pleasures of life. The more all wish to injure his, has vanished, the more all pain will cease. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who does not offend by body, word, or thought, and is controlled on these three points. He from whom he may learn the law is taught by the well-awakened Buddha. Him, let him worship assiduously as the Brahmana workshops, worships the sacrificial fire. A man does not become a Brahmana by his plaited of hair, by his family or by birth, to whom there is truth and righteousness. He is blessed. He is a Brahmana. What is the use of plaited hair, O fool? What is the raiment of goat skin? Within thee there is ravening. From the outside thou makest clean. The man who wears dirty raiment, who is emaciated and covered with veins, and meditates alone in the forest, him I call indeed a Brahmana. I do not call a man a Brahmana because of his origin or, or of his mother. He is indeed arrogant and he is wealthy, but the poor who is free from all attachments, him I call indeed a Brahmana. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who after cutting all fetters never tremble, is free from bonds and unshackled. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who after cutting the strap and strong, the rope and ball that pertains to it, has destroyed all obstacles and is awakened. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who though he has committed no offense, endures reproach, stripes and bonds, who has endured for his force, the strength, the strength of his army. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who is free from anger, dutiful, virtuous, without appetites, who is subdued and has received his last body. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who does not cling to sensual pleasures, like water on a lotus leaf, like a mustard seed from the point of a needle. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who, even here, knows the end of his own suffering, has put down his burden, and is unshackled. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, whose knowledge is deep, who possesses wisdom, who knows the right way and the wrong, and has attained the highest end. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who keeps aloof from both layman and from meditants, who frequents no houses and has but few desires. Him I call a Brahmana, who without hurting any creatures, whether feeble or strong, does not kill or cause slaughter. Him I indeed call a Brahmana, who is tolerant with the intolerant, mild with the violent, and free from greed among the greedy. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, from whom anger and hatred, pride, hypocrisy, 
have dropped like the mustard seed to the point of a needle. If I call out and breed of Ramana, he utters true speech, constructive and free from harshness, so that he offend no one. Him I call a Brahmana. He takes nothing in the world that is not hidden, be it long or short, small or large, good or bad. Him I indeed call a Brahmana. He fosters no desires for this world or for the next. He has no inclination. His desire is unshackled. Him I call indeed a Brahmana who has no interest. And he, and when he has understood the truth, does not say how, how, and who has reached the depth of the immortal. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, and in this world has risen above both ties, good and evil, who is free from grief, from sin, and from impurity. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who is bright like the moon, pure, serene, undisturbed, and in whom all gaiety is extinct. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who has traversed this miry road, this impassable world, difficult to pass in insanity, who has gone through and reached the other shore, is thoughtful, steadfast, free from doubts, free from attachment and discontent. He might call indeed a Brahmana, who in this world, having abandoned all desires, travels about without a home, in whom all completeness is extinct. You might call indeed a Brahmana who, having abandoned all longings, travels without a home, and in whom all covetousness is extinct. You might call indeed a Brahmana who, after leaving all bondage to men, has risen above all bondage to the gods and is free from all and every bondage. And I call indeed a Brahmana who has left what gives pleasure and what gives pain, who is cold and free from all germs of renewed life. The hero who has conquered all the worlds, him I call indeed a Brahmana, who knows the destruction and the return of beings everywhere, who is free from bondage, welfaring and awakened Buddha. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, whose path the gods do not know, nor spirits, nor men, whose passions are extinct, and who is in a rot or venerable. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who calls nothing his own, whether he before, behind, or between, who is poor and free from the love of the world. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, the manly, the noble, the hero, the great sage, the conqueror, the indifferent, the accomplished, the awakened. Him I call indeed a Brahmana, who knows his former abodes, who sees heaven and hell, has reached the end of birth, is perfect in knowledge, a sage, and whose perfections are all, are all perfect. The end of the Dharma Papa. I hope you enjoyed these readings. And thank you very much. And may you all be enlightened on your path to Buddhahood. And let us contemplate all of these teachings. Hello, everyone, and happy holidays and Merry Christmas. And I want to thank everyone for watching the Dharma Papa video that Nolan and I did. It was a lot of fun, it was spiritual, and I hope that we all learned about love, compassion, patience, and unity. So, happy holidays, everyone, and Merry Christmas. We love you.